Hey guys, my name is GPS and I'm so excited to be back, especially because I have a video for you today that has been really highly requested. Ever since I did my review of Moina, I've been getting asked to do a similar deep dive on a brand that, just like Moina, is very often compared to Hermes, which is Delvo. Now Delvo is a brand that I have been familiar with for quite a while. I must have walked past their flagship on 59th Street in New York at least a hundred times, and I even have friends who own pieces from them, but for some reason I never felt inclined to have a close look at any one of their pieces. So when I kept getting asked to review them, I knew I had to do a little bit more digging. So a few weeks ago we had the chance to visit the Delvo mothership in Belgium, which is where the brand is originally from just so I can have a first-hand experience for what the brand is all about and look at their most iconic pieces up close and personal. So if you'd like to come to Belgium with me to visit the Delvo flagship and hear my thoughts on whether Delvo is really that comparable to Hermes, then please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and keep on watching. Just a bit of background on Delvo, in case you are as new to the brand as I was, Delvo is a Belgian brand that was founded in 1829 and they claim to be the oldest fine leather goods house, which let's be honest is nothing outstanding, no matter what heritage house you talk to, be it Chanel, Hermes, Louis Vuitton, even Moina, they claim to be the first at something. But when I actually looked into Delvo, their story seems to check out and they might actually be the oldest still standing fine leather goods house because Delvo was founded in 1829, about 20 years before the first heritage leather goods house that has a similar inception story as Delvo. About 20 years later in 49 came Moina and then Louis Vuitton wasn't actually founded until 1854. So there is quite a few years in between Delvo and their competitor starting out. And the reason why I'm comparing Delvo so heavily to Moina and Louis Vuitton is because all three of them have a really similar inception story. All three of them started out by creating luggages. And it wasn't actually until 1908 that Delvo issued their first patent for a handbag that was crafted for women to hold their dearest belongings close to them on their journeys. And in the early 1900s, when traveling on railroads and trains became more of a common thing that people did, Delvo started feeling that there was a need for creating a bag that was quite a bit smaller than suitcases and trunks but more sizable than traditional evening bags of the time for women to hold all their essentials. And that is pretty much how the first, let's say, prototypes of modern handbags were born, which Delvo continued creating for the next 25 years, until in 1933, a business savvy couple took over the brand who was very much inspired by the Parisian haute couture culture, and they started introducing seasonal collections to the brand that were crafted both in Belgium and now in France as well. But it wasn't until 1958 that Delvo was officially put on the map when they introduced the Brilliant Bag, which remains to be their most iconic and best-selling bag that Delvo is known for, and the rest is history. We couldn't start anywhere else but with the bag that has started the Delvo Rage, which is the Brilliant bag that was introduced in 1958. The Brilliant is a really sharp and architectural bag that has all the party in the closure that is the focal point of the design. Other than that, the bag is really simplistic, structured, and traditional. But the buckle, which is the opening, is what I think really makes this bag stand out. So the Brilliant bag at this point is available in four different sizes. They have a mini, a PM, an MM, and then even a miniature size. So technically three bags and then one accessory, depending on whether you consider the miniature as an accessory or a bag. I would probably consider it a bag because again, it is fully functional and you can use it either as a bag charm or you can use it as a bag on its own. 
Then they also have different reiterations of the Brilliant bag, but I wanted to focus on the core design. And I know that the Brilliant is a design that is very often compared to the Kelly. For me, in my humble opinion, they are just night and day. The design, the way they feel, the way you interact with the bag, and the facets that they add to your collection are completely different. So for me, they are just not comparable pieces. Yes, they are both tapered single top handle bags, but that is pretty much where it stops. I wouldn't compare the Brilliant to the Kelly in any shape because they just feel different to me. And I find that when you look at them as part of a collection, they look completely different and they add completely different values to your ensemble. I think the best way of describing what carrying this bag feels like is really that you don't feel like you're carrying this bag. It feels more like that the bag is carrying you because it's just such a solid structure that it really doesn't matter which size you go for, it will always be a focal point of your outfit. And I feel like if you wanted to carry this bag, people wouldn't be like, oh, what a nice outfit they're wearing. They would be like, that is quite a bag that they're carrying. It will for sure make a statement. Whether that is the right statement for you, that is completely up to you, but it is definitely a really sharp and solid bag that very much reminds me of an 80s power suit. The next bag is just as iconic and beloved as the Brilliant bag, which is the so-called Tompette, which if I'm not mistaken means storm. And the reason this bag was given this name is because it was actually inspired by the sailboat's trapeze-shaped mainsail. So it has a very similar tapered structure to it as the Brilliant bag does, although I find the top bag to be quite a lot broader. And if anything, this would be more comparable to a Kelly Cellier than the Brilliant bag would be, especially because of the proportions of the bag and the size and feel of the top handle. Not to mention that the single leg details on the side, but still I don't find that this would be a Kelly dupe now, if I wanted to compare the Tompette to the Brilliant bag, it would be a really easy comparison because I find the Tompette to be, first of all, more universally flattering. And I think the shape, the proportions, the structure and the design itself is a lot more streamlined and modern. So if you're looking for a more contemporary bag, I think the Tompette will be for you. If you're looking for a bag that makes more of a statement and is more of a standout piece, I think you are better off going for the Brilliant. But the Tompette, I think, is a great design. Is it comparable to the Kelly? Not really, I just feel the way, because of the way it feels and the characteristics it has, it has a much more of a casual and rock and roll feel to it, especially because of the stud details on the front. I just really don't feel like that it is a similar effect that it would give as a Kelly bag would. If anything, to me, it feels more like a Valentino bag. Definitely a lot more luxurious take on a Valentino bag. In terms of price, the original Tompad bags start at around $4,000, the lower end of $4,000, and they go up as high as $6,000 when we talk about the original bags. Obviously, they have, as I mentioned, limited edition variations and different reiterations of this design that some of them might be cheaper, some of them might be a little bit more expensive, but that's about what you can expect to pay. And then I don't think I mentioned pricing for the Brilliant bag, which starts at just under $5,000 and it increases as you go up in size, but you can definitely expect to pay a little bit more for the Brilliant bag than you can pay for the Tom Pad mainly because of that really robust hardware that it has on the front. But personally, I prefer the Tompette anyway. So in terms of pricing, those are the prices that you should expect. And last but not least, I wanted to introduce you to a newer style from Delvo, which is the one that I was considering picking up. So when I went to the store, I really had no intentions of buying any one of their more classic bags because I knew that they wouldn't really add anything to my collection and I still very much stand by that. But I was really tempted by this bag. Unfortunately, they didn't have the color in the leather that I wanted, but they promised me that they'll let me know whenever it becomes available. So I am waiting to hear back from them about this bag because I found this to be a really, really cool design and it is the so-called cool box. This is a new introduction to the world of Delveux. 
which is quite a relaxed, understated, functionality-first design that looks quite expensive at the same time. I'm not sure what gives it that sort of luxurious je ne sais quoi aspect, but there's something about it, just the way it's constructed, the beautiful leathers that they use to construct this bag, and the way it sits against the body. It comes in three different sizes, Nano, Mini, and MM. The Nano size is the smallest one, which is, I believe, 16 centimeters or 16.5. Then the Mini is around 23, and then the larger size is 28. Clearly, there's a pattern going on with Davu's sizing, which I actually appreciate that their sizing is pretty consistent. I liked both the Nano and the Mini size, the Nano being obviously the smaller one. The main difference, obviously, other than the sizing, is the fact that the Nano comes with a thinner adjustable strap, and then the Mini comes with a set thicker strap. And unfortunately, when I was there, they didn't have the Nano in regular leather in black, because obviously I would have gone for black. They only had it in matte alligator, which, by the way, if you see any Davu bags in alligator, it's never embossed, they use actual exotic skins. So obviously you will be paying exotic prices for those. And I definitely didn't want my first bag from this brand to be an exotic skin. I wanted to test the waters with something a little bit more budget friendly, but unfortunately it was only available in black matte alligator at the time. So they promised they would let me know when it becomes available in regular skin. So perhaps that is a bag that will be next on my list because I did really enjoy the design. It was understated, it was elegant, it was simple, but there was something just special about it, I felt. It reminded me of almost a Victoria and a Bolide bag from Hermes. If those two were merged, I feel like this could potentially be the result of that. So you can never know, maybe the cool box will be the next bag that you see me unbox on here. So in conclusion, do I think that Delvo is a dupe of Hermes or Hermes is a dupe of Delvo? I absolutely do not think so. Not that I've had the chance to play around with their pieces, learn about the brand, experience what they're all about. I can tell you that I really don't see too many similarities. Yes, they both create timeless, elegant designs and some of their shapes are quite similar but their design and aesthetic approach are two completely different things. With Moina, I felt that it was very different. With Moina, I felt that there was a lot of um, similarities that could be drawn between the two brands. With Delvo, I really don't feel like that. Yes, they do have bags that do kind of look alike or have similar feel to them, but when you actually try them and interact with the bags, you'll realize that they add very different values to your collection. It's just like saying that Shake Shack and McDonald's are the same thing. Just because they do burgers, that doesn't mean that they are the same restaurant or they are even dupes. If you're looking for a nice bag, you can go to either brand. It just really comes down to which aesthetic you prefer. But I have to say I was very much impressed by Dalvo. All the way from the customer service, through the experience, to the actual designs, I can really only say good things. Some of the pieces, maybe the brilliant line, just really wasn't for me, but I did still have fun looking at their pieces, and I hope you enjoy this, and if there are any other brands that you'd like me to do a similar deep dive on, be sure to let me know in the comment section, and if you enjoy this, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, and also be sure to hit subscribe down below, because I will be uploading three times a week, moving forward for about the next month, just to make up for the lack of videos during the past week and a half. But I really appreciate you being here and thank you so much for watching. Bye!